everyone in this video i would like to give you a short review on the anatomical feature of hepatic biliary apparatus pathophysiology of gallstone formation pathway of pile this video is gonna be a revision session for medical students for medical students i want you to join and study with me in this hour so let's start from the biliary apparatus there are two parts of biliary apparatus intrahepatic biliary apparatus and extrahepatic biliary apparatus through which hepatic bile and gallbladder bile are conveyed into the second part of duodenum intrahepatic biliary apparatus includes bile canaliculi canal of herring and bile ductules and extrahepatic biliary apparatus includes right and left hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, cystic duct, gallbladder, and common bile duct. And then common bile duct unites with the main pancreatic duct, form ampulla of water, and opens into this second part of duodenum in the major duodenum papilla. Now let's draw a figure of biliary apparatus, extrabiliary apparatus, and pathway of bile. So this is the outline of bile pathway. The right and left hepatic ducts from the right and left lobes of the liver emerge through porta hepatis and unite near its right end to form a common hepatic duct and then joined on its right side by the cystic duct. The angle between the cystic duct and common hepatic duct is called callot's triangle or cystohepatic angle. The identification of this angle is an important prerequisite for the surgeons before putting ligatures to the pedicles of gallbladder. After that, hepatic bile comes to the gallbladder bile and gallbladder has three parts, neck, body and fundus. From the neck of the gallbladder, a small diverticulum may proceed downwards and backwards towards the duodenum, is known as Hertzman's pouch. Gallstone may lodge in this pouch and its prolonged time it's, it causes friction to the gallbladder and ultimately causes ulceration. After that, gallbladder bile conveys through the cystic duct and continues in the common bile duct. Common bile duct comes in contact with main pancreatic duct and both ducts pierce the duodenal walls separately and unite before termination to form a dilatation. This is known as ampulla of water. It controls the passage of both bile and pancreatic juice in the duodenum in a balanced way. Now, what is bile? Bile is the secretory product of hepatocytes, goes to the gallbladder where it is concentrated 10 times than the liver. What is the composition of bile? Bile salts, bile pigment like bilirubin, cholesterol ester and phospholipid lecithin. Here, cholesterol ester is hydrophobic, so bile salt and phospholipid act as solubilizer of cholesterol in solution. This prevents cholesterol precipitation and gallstone formation. So the function of bile is emulsification of fat. All these events are normal in our body. Now, what are those conditions that 
break the normality and causes gallstone formation when bile contains too much cholesterol but not enough bile salts that may contribute to the gallstone development now discuss about the pathophysiology of bile there are three main pathways in the formation of gallstone cholesterol supersaturation excess bilirubin production and gallbladder hypermotility or impaired contractility as you know that bile acids solubilize cholesterol and prevents cholesterol precipitation but in case of cholesterol supersaturation bile acid synthesis is decreased increase cholesterol synthesis in liver then super saturation of bile with cholesterol occur which leads to formation of cholesterol precipitates which further trapped by mucus hypersecretion and then gallstone formation occur in case of excess bilirubin production conjugated bilirubin comes from the rbc comes to the gall bladder and become unconjugated which binds with calcium and form calcium bilirubinate and inorganic calcium salts which further coated by mucin gel then gallstone formation occur in case of gallbladder hypomotility generally what happens presence of fatty food in duodenum stimulates the release of cholecystokinin pancreasamine from duodenum and jejunum cholecystokinin pancreasamine causes contraction of gallbladder so that gallbladder empties its stored concentrated bile into the duodenum case of any kind of obstruction duodenum may fail to secrete cholecystokinin pancreasamine enzyme which further leads to gallbladder hypomotility or impaired contractility inappropriate and infrequent emptying may cause bile to become over concentrated and contribute to gallstone formation ultimately the first pathway cholesterol supersaturation produce cholesterol gallstone which is the most common gallstone and the second pathway which was excess bilirubin production produce black pigmented gallstone and the third pathway which was gallbladder hypermotility or impaired contractility produce brown pigmented gallstone now let's talk about the risk factors of gallstone formation the phase 4a summarizes the major risk factor for development of gallstones female fat Forty and fertile. Intake of oral contraceptive pill. Obesity. Rapid weight loss, fatty diet, diabetes mellitus, prolonged fasting are the risk factors for gallstone formation. Fatty diet. There are two types of. fatty acid saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid 
saturated fatty acid like animal fat those saturated fatty acid increase plasma cholesterol level and unsaturated fatty acid like vegetable oil fish oil decrease plasma cholesterol level dietary fiber and fish intake also decrease plasma cholesterol level so patients associated with some symptoms of gallstone formation they should not take saturated fatty acid like animal fat and they should take unsaturated fatty acid like vegetable oil fish dietary fiber etc complications of gallstone formation in gallbladder it may cause acute and chronic cholecystitis inflama of gallbladder mucil of gallbladder perforation gangrene and carcinoma in bile duct it may cause obstructive jaundice cholangitis acute pancreatitis as small intestine is the continuation of duodenum so it also causes complication in intestine like acute intestinal obstruction so this was my short probably i made it a broad review on pathophysiology with anatomy biochemistry and physiology of gallstone formation do you know about the clinical terms of gallbladder keep your eye on our screen